The reviews are in. What do we think of Princess Peach Showtime? It's the LP Podcast. Hello and happy Tuesday. It's the day of the week where I do more talking than playing of Nintendo games, but Nintendo's the topic all the same. Specifically today, what you see on screen here, last week's release, Princess Peach Showtime. It is the princess's first solo title since the Nintendo DS's Super Princess Peach, which was, shall we say, uh, uh, disliked, for lack of a better term. Reviews are trickling in uh, with differentiating tones across the board and we'll kind of look at both the good the bad and then also the ugly here to start first and foremost let's do just that with the guardians review of princess peach showtime calling it a paper thin performance two out of five stars kids will enjoy the pomp and color but princess peach's long-awaited star turn is disappointingly shallow harsh words coming from mr tom regan let's read on the ending of 1985 Super Mario Bros. soundtracked by the iconic bleeps and blips of the 8-bit NES has Mario finally finding the princess who has been in another castle for the entire game. As the mustachioed hero leaps to her side, a text bubble reveals the name of our digitized damsel in distress, Princess Peach. She gives her thanks, the credits roll, and we bid her farewell. As you'll know if you watched Anna Taylor-Joy's performance in last year's Mario movie, the Mushroom Kingdom's monarch is rather less one-dimensional these days, as you'd hope, given how video games and feminism have progressed over the past 40 years. But this is only the second game in which she has had a starring role, the first since 2005's DS game Super Princess Peach. Showtime puts Nintendo's Pink Princess literally in the spotlight as a trip to the theater goes awry and she must take to the stage to save the dramatic arts from evil grapes the review continues on but it doesn't seem like it's all that positive i'll try and dig into it and see if we can find specifically what they have issues with here the problem is where the house of mario normally nails the balance between depth and accessibility showtime feels shallow whether it's the diabolical mermaid levels or the laughably incomplete investigations of detective peach many of these potentially fun ideas feel like prototypes that prematurely escape nintendo hq so, I suppose everyone is entitled to their opinion, but I feel like this is overly harsh, and I'll get into my own opinion of the game going forward, but I just wanted to start this whole conversation with what ugly looks like, or bad even, because when I talk about the good and the bad and the ugly of the reviews for the Super, not Super, excuse me, for Princess Peach Showtime, really there's not a whole lot of bad. This was uh, the only real significant one that I could find myself. So moving on from this one, we look at IGN's review of Princess Peach Showtime, a simple cheery romp with a variety of gameplay styles and a fantastic theater-inspired setting. If Captain Toad tracks treasure, Luigi goes after ghosts, and Wario makes money off of his microgames, what would Princess Peach do in a spin-off of her own? Princess Peach Showtime's answer is that she can do, well, pretty much anything, and there is the crux of why I love this game. Again, I'll get into that later on, but you can see the dichotomy here between the Guardian's review and IGN's review. They both touch on the diversity of abilities, the diversity of gameplay mechanics, but the Guardian doesn't think of them as fleshed out, whereas IGN relishes the opportunity to do all of these different things. And I think I find myself more in that camp. Uh, definitely more so than considering it a two out of five star. But speaking about about ranking this game, uh, when, we, when we consider what the people have said, what reviewers have said, uh, I took the time actually to compile about 77 different reviews and sources. Uh, some were rating on a, on, a, on a rating scale of 1 to 5, others were 1 to 10, others still 1 to 100, and I sort of averaged them out. And the collective rating of this game uh, from fans and critics alike is an 8 out of 10, which is pretty respectable, right? It, I, I would consider that good. Honestly, I would have considered a 7 out of 10 good, uh, but fringe good, right? Teetering on the edge of eh and good. 8 is, is solidly good, and I would agree. 
Uh, you see here on the screen, this is my own gameplay actually from the series that I started just a few days back. Uh, I'll, I'll preface this with a caveat, I have not played a huge amount of this game, I am just a handful of hours in right now, but I do feel like I have enough of a sample size to develop an opinion. And again, like I mentioned, I lean more with the IGNs of the world than the Guardians in this instance because all of the different abilities and effects that you're able to take advantage of as you progress through the theater in Princess Peach Showtime are also very unique. And that was something that I wasn't necessarily certain or uh, maybe I was a little bit iffy on, right? Because you think of Mario games in the past uh, where you don't necessarily need the power-ups to accomplish the goals. Sir, sure, it would make it easier, uh, but each of the power-ups so far that I've experienced in Princess Peach Showtime are completely necessary. The stages that you find them in are entirely themed and built around uh, these very, very fun and unique abilities. And when I say unique, I mean unique. I'm not here to spoil anything for you guys. Uh, myself, I remained relatively spoiler-free in the lead-up to this game, so I'm experiencing it all blind. Ephesus is blind. And uh, it, 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 it's astounding the direction that Nintendo chose to go with some of these uh, some of these movesets. Uh, a, a far cry, to be honest with you, with what I had previously associated with Princess Peach, right? You do have Patissier Peach, everyone knows that from the first trailer, and that is more in line with, like, the Princess Peach that we know, right? You know, she's sweet, she's kind, she bakes things, goodness gracious, she invited Mario over to the castle for a bite of her cake, and that's how that whole adventure got started. But then you see here on screen, Swordfighter Peach. She's never held a sword before, at least not like that. She's a certified swashbuckler. And I think it's freaking awesome because not only are you able to, to slash and dash and attack the enemies, but you have these action commands that help you dodge the attacks from your enemies and deal a heaping heck ton more damage as a result. All in all, while I won't, I won't, I won't tell you it's game of the year, assuredly not, it's fun, it's cute. It's a Nintendo game. It's in that same Mario universe. I don't want to call it a Mario game because it is Peach specific, but it's in that same vein with platforming and adventure elements all the same that tie together alongside the music and the gameplay that just make it a good time. And sure, you do have some people complaining out there about difficulty. Oh, it's too easy. And really, if that's all we're going to complain about is that it's not difficult enough, sign me up. All right, not everything has to be a Dark Souls. You don't have to bash your head against your desk and scramble on the internet to find a guide to progress two more inches deeper into the game in order for it to be fun. Frankly, I'd prefer the opposite. You know, if I were to choose between a Souls-like game and a Princess Peach Showtime type game, I would pick Princess Peach nine times out of 10. And, and, and the 10th time, I just would pick neither. <laughs> Because I don't play a video game because I need to be, you know, mentally challenged, that I need to be frustrated, I need to be stumped. I play to escape reality, where I already find plenty of frustrations and challenges. You know what I'm saying? It's 2024. Things are... Things are things. So, Princess Peach Showtime, in that effect, is an excellent escape from reality. It's a beautiful art style colorful saturation, the music, the gameplay mechanics, and the diversity therein, I give it an equal 8 out of 10, just like the average that I took from all of those 77 different sources. And I'd be curious to hear from you, if you've played any amount of it, what your thoughts are. Now, I will say, however, before I fully put that call to action out, if you've only played the demo, I, I can't say for certain whether or not that's a good picture of the game because I myself did not play the demo. I have been playing the main game. So if the demo feels to you like it was enough of a sample size for you to, to put a grade on this, then by all means, let me know what your thoughts are. Or you can just preface it and say, hey, I played the demo. I didn't like it or I loved it or what have you. But if you have played the game, very curious to hear what you think of it and very curious to hear what you think it could have done better if in fact you don't like it. Because, as we all know, it's not perfect. Few things are, okay? Especially when it comes to a mainline Princess Peach game, of which we know there are precious few, this being the second one. All I can say is that I hope it does continue to do well. I hope the 8s out of 10s continue to be the case, because honestly, the world needs more Princess games. Don't you think? That's the LP Podcast.